So we're going to push on. We're also going to do uh, flipping or reflecting functions. I call them flipping because when you describe them as reflections, it kind of is a bit confusing of which direction they're moving. Flipping for me is a really a visual way of watching what's happening here. So we've already talked about this, but we're going to just reiterate the point that we've got here. This time I've got f of x is x squared, and now I've made it become minus f of x. So all of the coordinates, all of the y coordinates, have gone from being the positive version to the negative version, the positive version to the negative version. So what has happened to the y coordinates? All of the y coordinates have, I'm going to use the word negated because it means becomes negative, but actually even more specifically, it means that if it was negative, it's become positive. Negated means it has like flipped over. Pardon? I don't know. So what's happened to the y coordinates when it's transformed to minus f of x? They have all negated. So all of the y coordinates, if they were positive, they have become negative. If they are negative, they have become positive. There's only one exception. Yeah, if it was 0, it just stayed at 0, didn't it? Because you can't negate 0, it just stays at 0. So everything has like flipped over. Now, what this looks like is a reflection in the x-axis. The reason I don't like saying reflection in the x-axis is because I hear x-axis and it makes me think of the x-direction. I prefer to think of it as being a flip in the y-direction because anything that is on outside of the functions has so far been to do with y. When we had f of x plus a, it was a translation in the y-direction. When we had a, f of x, it was a stretching in the y direction. So if I have minus f of x, I like to think of it as a flipping in the y direction. For me, that's consistent of the way that it works. If I say it's a reflection in the x-axis, I just personally find that a little bit confusing. But it is the same thing. If it was minus 2 f of x, it would flip and it would also stretch. So it would be like this kind of shape. That's not perfect, but it's trying to show that this, these have also stretched all the way down like this. So they've also stretched further. And you'll, I'll show you that on a Desmos demonstration of it too. So let's just quickly hop back to this graph. So it's a little bit harder to see with this one. Remember the red graph was our starting graph, and I've now made it negative f of x. So this bit that was positive has become negative. This bit that was a negative arm has become a positive arm. This negative bump has become a positive bump, and this positive arm has become a negative arm. So you can see everything is as though it has like flipped over around the x-axis in that vertical direction that we've got there. And then your question was, what would it be if it was that a was equal to minus 2? Can you see how it has flipped and also stretched? So the bump has gone from being a positive bump to then being a negative and doubly stretched bump as well. So you've got to kind of think about different sections of the graph to be able to do this. People notoriously find this difficult the first few times they do it. And practice just makes these things get a lot better. And so then the other one we wanted to talk about was what happens when we go from a function, in this case I've done the square root of x, and I'll say why I've picked this one instead, to f of minus x. So this time the minus is inside the brackets next to the x. Can anybody tell me why they think I haven't done this with y equals x squared? Why I haven't done this with y equals x squared? Because I've, I've done all of the other ones with x squared. This one I decided to do with root x. Andrew? Because if you did it with x squared, then it would let you change the thing from the x squared to the x. Yeah, exactly. If I actually did this was x squared and then I did minus x squared, it would literally be the same graph because uh, minus x all squared is the same as x squared. So I picked a graph. This black graph that I've got here is the square root of x. I did that one to show you that what happens to the x-coordinates, they all negate and they flip over, OK? So let's just write that down for this one. We sort of spoke about this one earlier. What has happened to the x-coordinates when f of x is transformed to f of minus x? 
they have all negated. In other words, it has flipped horizontally, or you might say left and right, or you might say it is a reflection in the y-axis. I'm going to put that one in brackets because we've got these three different options here. Because as, you, as I was just explaining, I prefer to think of it as flipping because it's consistent with all of the directions that we've got. The reflection just confuses me with using a letter that doesn't really belong to, to what I'm saying here. So we've now got six different kinds of ones that we've got here. The last two, minus f of x is f of x flipped in the y direction. f of minus x is f of x flipped in the x direction. So it's about trying to think of these six different transformations and how we can apply all of these together. We are going to do two more examples, and then I've done an awful lot of talking. We'll then be doing some practice just after this point here, OK? So if y equals x brackets x plus 2, sketch y equals f of x and y equals minus f of x on the same axis. So minus f of x is going to be, it is going to flip in the x or y direction. Y is outside, is going to be flipping in the vertical direction. It's going to be flipping in the y direction. So what we're going to do is sketch the graph. So we have x and x plus 2, which means it's going to be crossing at 0 and minus 2. And it is a quadratic, like this. And then I'll do my minus f of x. So it's going to be what kind of shape? Yeah, like, a, like a, a negative quadratic. So it's going to look like this shape. What can you tell me about those two purple arrows? They are negative. They're equal to each other. This distance is the same as this distance because the y coordinates haven't changed. They've just flipped over, OK? So you don't need to add that to your diagram, but it's just worth noting that they will be in exactly the same place. And you could, you could find out what this coordinate was by doing completing the square and finding the turning point. And all you would need to do is negate the y coordinate to find out where this new one would be that you've got here. And it's worth saying y equals f of x is x, x plus 2. y equals minus f of x would have been minus x, x plus 2. And that works, because we know how to sketch this quadratic. It's a negative quadratic that crosses at 0 and minus 2. So all we did was just put the negative just outside the front there. We're nearly there. So the thing that's nice here is it's consistent with everything that we know so far. If I asked you to sketch these two graphs, you would have been able to sketch these two graphs as the blue one and the red one. And now you're able to sketch these graphs just using the function notation and knowing what the transformations actually mean. Any questions on these ones before we did the last example? OK, I'll give you just 30 seconds to finish writing that one down. And this topic does come up again in year 12, so it's uh, in year 13. So it's really important that you understand all of these bits, because they will be coming back again. It's one of the kind of theme topics that will just be like spread throughout the course. It's not going to be just one question on it. It may pop up in lots of other areas. It is a very, very big, important topic to know about. OK, I'm going to go on to the next page now. So first of all, it wants us to sketch a cubic. And then it wants us to sketch this second cubic that we've got here. Can anybody spot what has changed from this cubic to this cubic? 
what has negated? The inputs have negated, okay? So if, if f of x is x, x plus 3, x plus 5, then f of minus x would be minus x, minus x plus 3, minus x plus 5. Notice how I've replaced all of the x's with minus x, which is just the same as minus x, 3 minus x, 5 minus x. So it is the graph that we're trying to ske sketch. We're going to be aiming to sketch this one that we've got here. So Ikrin was very, it was very quick to spot that the two graphs were the same, but the input had been negated. Which means it is going to be flipping in the up and down or left and right direction of its inside. In the x direction. It's going to be flipping left and right in the x direction because everything that's inside the brackets is always in the x direction. Always. It's been a stretch in the x direction. It's been a translation in the x direction. It's also a flipping in the x direction. It's going to go to the left. So it's going to flip over. It's going to flip around left and right. That's when I say a left and right direction. If I'm flipping like this keyboard, yeah. it's flipping from this to this. It's like flipping around it's like that. It's a reflection in the y-axis, but the direction of the flipping is left and right. And the reason I say flipping in left and right is because it's always then left and right if something is inside the bracket like this, like this minus x. So let's draw the graph. We can see then that the original one is a positive cubic crossing at 0, minus 3, and minus 5. So there's my 0, minus 3, and minus 5. So it's going to be that kind of shape. There's my minus 5, there's my minus 3, and there's my 0. We're only going to concentrate on negating the x coordinates. So it's going to be crossing at 0. Instead of crossing at minus 3, it's going to be crossing at 3. And instead of crossing at minus 5, it's going to be crossing at 5. And now we have to be good at reflecting it or flipping it over. So it is going to be going, that's the way it's going here, so it's going to be going like this. Like this. This is y equals f of minus x. And this is y equals f of x. One last question before we go on to the exercise. If I just asked you to sketch those two graphs without even knowing about this idea of flipping, would we have come up with those two graphs? Yes, how, how do you know we would have come up with them? With the blue one, we definitely know we would have done. No, it's, a it's a negative cubic. Look, it is a negative cubic. because You've got a negative times a negative times a negative. It's a negative cubic which crosses at 0, 3, and 5. 0, 3, and 5. So everything we've learned so far perfectly meshes together. You can either do the idea of thinking about it as flipping, you can think about it as a geometric one, or you can think about it as a sketching one. They are the same thing that is happening here. So we're going to do some questions from exercise 4F. We're pretty much going to do that for the rest of the lesson today. And then we'll do one more lesson on transformations in the next lesson. OK? Yeah.